This is the third lesson in a set of lessons on transforming rational functions and rational parent functions. In this lesson we're going to look at how you can do a vertical compression and we're also going to look at how you can do more than one transformation at the same time to a function. In previous lessons we've looked at how you can transform the y equals 1 over x uh, by adding or subtracting a number outside of the function like plus 2, that would move it up or up to, and a minus 2 would move it down. Uh, we also talked about how you could write a number in the denominator like minus 2, and that would move it to the right two places, or a plus 2 would move it to the left. And we talked about how you could do vertical stretches by putting a bigger number in the numerator, like 2 over x would do a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Uh, it has the effect of multiplying 1 over x by 2. And then we looked at how you could reflect the whole graph over the x-axis by putting a negative in front of the graph. So in this lesson, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of new transformations. I'm going to write this one first. y equals 1 half 1 over x. So 1 half, 1 over x. 1 half in front, since 1 half is between 0 and 1, it has the effect of a vertical compression. Uh, we saw in a previous lesson when the number is bigger than 1, then that's a vertical stretch. Uh, so it had a little bit different effect. Now, first thing you want to note is on the parent function, when x is 1, y is 1. Uh, y equals 1 over x, that would be 1 over 1. And the same thing is true when x is negative 1, y will be negative 1. So that's kind of where we get the shape of our graph that you see here now. But now when we have a compression of 1 half, when x is 1, now y is 1 half. It only is up half as high as it would have been. So now the effect of the graph is this. It comes down like this, curves here, and goes up this way. You may not can tell it that much in mind. Same thing is true on the negative. Maybe looks a little bit better over here on this side. Probably drew it a little bit better. Uh, that has the effect of making a steeper curve. And in effect, as that one-half gets closer and closer to zero, like one-fourth or one-fifth, then that curve would become steeper and steeper until the turn would almost happen right up in the corners there. Uh, so the effect of a fraction in front multiplying by a fraction or a decimal number that's less than one but greater than zero is a vertical compression. We call it a compression because it's like we press on the graph or we push on the graph vertically from up above and down below and that pushes it in or compresses it. Now let me get rid of that one, bring my parent back up. And I'm going to make up another graph here. I want to write y equals 1 over, and in parentheses down here I'm going to write x plus 2, and down here I'm going to write minus 1. Now the effect of this is a multiple transformation that you may remember from a couple of lessons ago what each one of these do individually, but uh, let's look at what they do together, which is actually uh, going to move two asymptotes. Remember that a horizontal and a vertical asymptote is aligned that the graph approaches but never quite reaches. It will get infinitely close but never quite get there. Uh, on the parent function those asymptotes are the x and the y axis where x equals 0, y equals 0. Uh, let's take a look at this. First of all the negative 1 out here has the effect of moving the graph down 1. So I'm going to draw a new horizontal asymptote. I'm just going to sketch it here at negative 1. So that's going to be my new reference line. So I drew it as a dotted line. The plus 2 right here, which is in the denominator inside the function, has the effect of moving the graph to the left 2. So I'm going to draw a vertical asymptote over here at negative 2. So those are going to be my new reference lines as I draw my new graph. Now notice I didn't have any vertical stretch because it was still a 1 on top right here and I didn't have a vertical compression because there was nothing multiplied, no fractions or decimals in the front. 
and there was no reflection otherwise I would have had a negative right here and that negative then would have caused it to reflect but that didn't happen here uh, so let's just sketch this using our asymptotes as our reference I'll get here as close as I can to getting it right so we come down like this cross there at one and go off to infinity approaching X closer and closer but never getting there same thing on the negative side come to here crosses at approximately one and heads off to negative infinity along the y-axis but never quite reaches the y-axis or not even the x and y-axis this time but the asymptote that's at negative two and the asymptote that's at negative one uh, for x so we've moved our graph to left and down one I'm going to get rid of it one more time and I'm going to draw one more here this time I'm going to do negative 2 over x. Okay, now remember the 2 in the numerator means we've multiplied the 1 over x parent function by 2. The negative in front means we're going to reflect over the x-axis. So we have a vertical stretch of 2 and we have a reflection over x here. Okay, so now I need to draw my graphs in just the opposite places. I need to start up here above the x-axis and this time the vertical stretch of 2 tells me that my graph now is up here and shallower on that curve uh, what we're trying to do and I don't think I did a very good job of it uh, was to make it turn at negative or at 2 rather right here when x was negative 1 y should be positive 2 right here and the same thing over here, reflected over x again, remember. Uh, so when x is positive 1, then my turn should be right here at negative 2. So again, a shallower graph than the curve that we would see with the parent function because we, in effect, stretched this out as well as reflected it. Remember, we're stretching it because we're pulling this upward and downward like that one's being pulled down that's being pulled upward so it has the effect of stretching the graph and the, thus we call it a vertical stretch